Hi, this is Paula from CHE. Today I'm speaking with Inverness County Chief Administrative Officer Keith McDonald. What type of services is Inverness County, County offering to help the community during the pandemic? Well, we're working as staff to ensure that we continue to provide the services on an ongoing basis uh, to the residents of the Inverness County. Um, certainly, due to the pandemic, there are certain challenges that uh, staff have to face in order to uh, continue to deliver those services. So, for example, uh, currently, one item we've had to address is our recycling facility in Stratford. So, that is closed at the moment. Originally, it was um, closed to the public, uh, but we've had uh, challenges with ensuring that the staff uh, working there have been able to maintain uh, the distance that's required as well as there's as everyone knows there's shortages of protective equipment uh, for people uh, throughout Canada and the globe uh, so we've been uh, having some challenges to ensure that uh, the staff have the proper equipment required to do their work safely so we're making some efforts uh, certainly to replenish our stock pile of material that's required but in the meantime uh, the recycling depot uh, remains uh, closed and that means that there is no blue bag pickup uh, so what happens when our, our staff used to pick up uh, the material but now that's contracted out with GFL uh, that material and blue bags is brought to you the the recycling depot in uh, Strathmore and each bag is then uh, taken apart and the material separated uh, so cardboard, plastic, etc. would all be divided up. So there's a lot of contact between that material and our workers so we have to be cognizant of any potential uh, issues the pandemic causes uh, because of that process. So we're, we're erring on the side of safety currently until we get more information on on how can staff uh, complete this work uh, safely as well as getting more uh, protective equipment for staff. What is the process in getting the protective equipment? Who do you ask for it? So uh, what we, who we've been dealing with is municipalities and other municipalities throughout uh, Nova Scotia is to deal with EMO Nova Scotia. Uh, so the province is broken up into different regions and each region has an EMO lead through uh, that, that unit of government. Uh, so we communicate with that individual on an ongoing basis uh, about the challenges that we're experiencing, not just as an organization, but as a community. Uh, and then he brings those to a broader provincial table that meet on an ongoing basis to talk about all these issues and try to get uh, solutions. So just last week through EMO Nova Scotia, some additional material has been uh, provided to municipal units in Cape Breton. Uh, so we're, we've inventoried that and now we're going to uh, uh, supply those to staff uh, that require that material. Do you know if there are any efforts being done to, to get more safety equipment from the province? Oh, I'm not sure the exact details of what the province's efforts are, but they're certainly working uh, to open up uh, the supply chains uh, for various type of uh, equipment that is required. I'm sure their focus is currently with uh, healthcare uh, centers and such, uh, but of course uh, municipalities are a priority as well. So what should people do with their recycling? So we're just asking people to hold on to it. We had hoped to make a decision this past Friday on how we're going to move forward, uh, but we're still waiting for a few uh, decisions by the province uh, in order for us to make our decision and hopefully we'll get that information within the next day or two. Okay. Uh, then we will reach out to the community and broadcast broadly of uh, how we're going to handle blue bags going forward in the near, in the near future. That's been our biggest disruption point in terms of um, our finance office. It's, it's fully opened and supporting residents um, our maintenance team for water, wastewater, they've been deemed an essential service by the province of Nova Scotia, so they're still working 
on an ongoing basis and addressing water leaks or sewer backups. Uh, our water wastewater operators uh, who primarily work on their own are still working on a daily basis because they're also deemed essential services, uh, but all staff are taking steps to ensure that uh, they're working as safely as possible. I wanted to ask about uh, waste collection. Um, how are you keeping your workers safe? Well, they've all been provided the information um, that's from through the province, through their managers. So their managers have been speaking to them. But right now with solid waste collection, that's been contracted out to GFL. And now that's the responsibility of uh, GFL to ensure that those workers are, are following the proper protocols to uh, maintain s their safety. Uh, again, solid waste pickup has been deemed an essential service by the province. Uh, so the uh, the uh, the spatial requirement has been waived for those employ employees. Uh, but there's still certainly steps that can be taken to to lessen anyone's risk. What other services are being postponed at the moment? Well, currently there's two significant areas of the services that the municipality provides that's now been reorientated. Uh, that would be recreation, as well as our support for tourism and culture. Uh, right now, we know um, there's been a number of efforts to help support businesses through um, new programming uh, by the province as well as the federal government. Um, so we're hoping to uh, get that information out as uh, broadly as possible so residents are aware. Um, but we've reorientated some of our staff to really focus on what community supports can be provided. Uh, so our recreation and tourism and some of our admin staff are now uh, working hand in hand to develop programs such as the ones we delivered last week in supporting uh, youth and providing them some food security in this time. Uh, so we're looking at enough, we've been able to provide information packages to the community. We spread those out broadly and we've also put those online. We've uh, been able to add more resources onto our website and Facebook. Uh, so we have a, a detailed plan we'll be rolling out over the next uh, number of weeks to continue to help. Uh, support uh, community members as uh, they're facing this stressful time. Can you tell me about the food security program? Well, certainly what we've done so far is uh, through the Eastern District uh, Education Center, uh, they have a program to help support uh, some children with the breakfast program. Uh, so what we've been able to do is continue to work with them uh, and last week we were able to deliver food hampers to over 130 individuals um, at this time of need. Uh, basically they were dependent, not necessarily dependent, but they developed the reliance on that program in the past. So uh, we were just trying to fill in the blank. We got some support from the private sector as well as other uh, new funds that are available to help this type of issues through the province. Uh, so we're able to get that food out to people in, in, uh, that needed, needed those uh, resources. So uh, we're looking at doing that again in the future. Uh, um, some people misunderstood that uh, and they thought it was prepared food, uh, but it's really just it's packaged dry goods for the most part that's in a hamper that's provided to these families. So it was, we had straight area transit help with the distribution and a lot of volunteers that regularly regularly participate in that uh, that program through the Eastern District uh, Education Center. Can you tell me more about tourism? Is there any are there any efforts being done to help the industry? Well, above and beyond what the province and the federal government are doing, uh, certainly through what's called an uh, Cape Breton Regional Enterprise Network that the partnership delivers. Their staff have been re reaching out to businesses, including those in the tourism sector, to find out what challenges they're experiencing. Right now, we don't know what the upcoming tourism season is going to look like, if there is one at all. Um, 
so there's many businesses from accommodations to to uh, tour providers and everything in between uh, that are in a, a situation where they have quite a bit of questions and there's uncertainty uh, so we have to reach out to as many of those as possible make sure they're aware of the various programs the province and the federal government has put in place and that they take uh, we, that they're supported in those applications and and uh, that we collectively do as much as possible in this time uh, to see them through this uh, challenge with that industry. Who should people get in touch with who want to share if they have any questions about tourism? So if any business owners that work in that industry, who should they get in touch with to share their opinions and their questions? Well, there's a number of groups that they can reach out to. Certainly Destination Cape Breton has been taking a leadership role. Then we have Tourism Nova Scotia. Uh, also, the Department of Business has put together through um, Nova Scotia Business Inc., I'm pretty sure, a platform where businesses can register and uh, inform the government of what challenges they're experiencing. Uh, and through the municipality, it's through the regional uh, uh, enterprise network that's being administered by the Cape Rock Partnership, so they can also reach out. Uh, to them as well. Uh, we're going to, again, as I mentioned, we're going to have staff uh, randomly uh, contacting businesses in that sector over the next number of weeks to get additional information. Is council meeting currently? Yes, they are. We had some struggles uh, the first attempt to meet remotely. Um, Department of Municipal Affairs and Housing has directed all municipal units to continue uh, having their council meetings, but to do it remotely um, it's a challenge, certainly, uh, to get a new platform up and running when councillors aren't used to that type of uh, meeting process. Uh, so we actually had a meeting last week, and there'll be a, a the regular council meeting will be this Thursday. So the goal is to get everyone on a video conferencing. Last week we were unable to do that, it was a conference call, uh, but we'll continue to help uh, the councillors try to get ramped up with their uh, IT availability so that they can all interconnect and uh, as we move forward, meetings uh, uh, should get more uh, smooth, smooth, they should run a little bit more smoothly. It, it last week's went fairly well uh, for the first time uh, with the, everyone on conference call, so We'll continue to work with council uh, to make that as easy as possible for them. And how do you share that information with the community? What's being talked about in, during the council meetings? Well, we post uh, online uh, when all the meetings are, are underway or coming up um, to the public. Uh, so what we're doing now to get the information out certainly is to post the minutes within 24 hours after the meeting. Uh, so all of the information is there about the decisions council has made and then we uh, most of the time we get connected with media to ask questions in regards to those motions and uh, but we're, we're directing residents to the website where they can uh, read about the meeting through the, uh, the, minutes, the minutes as they're posted. Is there anything that you would like to add? No, thank you for the opportunity. No, nope, thank you for doing this and uh, I guess we'll talk again next week. Sure, sounds good.